Goodies Eatery, Tallahassee, Florida. That was my first job. And, uh, and now I work uh, right around the corner from it, so small world for me. Hey guys, welcome back to the World's Worst Fishing. I'm Chris Jones. I'm just getting off work, so I'm trying to get out of downtown without getting in a car accident, because uh, it's pretty crazy some days. But uh, still, in, still in my work clothes, of course, but uh, we're gonna go home and make some things. I have no idea what I'm gonna make yet. But I wanted to film a video, so I'm going to try and do that. Um, I only have about an hour and a half window to work with, so uh, hopefully I can get it done. But uh, So basically, on my 20 minute drive home, I'm going to think of something to do for you guys. Think of something to make. I'm, I'm thinking about maybe doing split, uh, split colors, but also split plastics. So making worms with the sinking blend for the body and then maybe the floating blend for the tail and just seeing what that does. I've never done it um, and I've had some people ask me to do it. Um, I, I would imagine it would more or less look like just a straight worm with all floating plastic, um, but I don't know. So that's actually an interesting thought. But anyway, I'm going to focus on my driving and I'll see you guys in the fish cave. Yeah, this is perfect, you guys. We got a thunderstorm coming in. And that's always what you want when making baits in an open shop. I'm totally being facetious. Well, let's get started while we can. Okay, so we have um, our 7-inch ribbon tail worm mold here. And I decided to do the split plastic idea because uh, it's just a hypothesis I've wanted to test. And, uh, and a couple of you guys have asked for it. So over here we have the dead-on black bucket, the sinking. Uh, worm blend, but here we have the floating feather light worm blend Okay, so we're gonna keep that over here on the left side All right, so sinking floating and uh, Actually, I probably don't need as much floating because that's just gonna be the tail portions So we'll put some of that back but uh, nonetheless um, we're gonna make a couple of worms and maybe a few other things. I'm not really sure. Um, I, I think a worm is probably where you would see the the difference the most, I, I feel like. Um, now, of course, you could do this in swim baits, but say you wanted the tail to, you know, uh, so for example, maybe you want your swim bait to um, run like that, I don't know. You, you want the tail to float a little more than the head. Um, I, I'm not really sure. Um, you know, you could take a frog and make the legs more floating. Just whatever you want to do. Um, but we're going to do it in a worm because that's what makes sense to me off the top of my head. Um, so anyway, we're going to mix up a few colors. I'm not sure what we're doing yet. And then we're going to get started. So uh, I've been making a few things for a big fishing trip that I'm going on this weekend. Uh, I made a post on my channel that I probably wasn't going to do a video this week, but this is that video that I said I wasn't going to do. So I've got a few marling frogs. I'm basically going down to Palatka, Florida to meet up with some special guests that you will see on my social media. Uh, one of them is a professional angler that you've been watching catch bass probably most of your fishing career. Uh, he's on the Major League Fishing Tour currently. And uh, the other special guest makes some of the uh, molds that we use. Um, so gonna be a really exciting time. So I've been making a few things. Uh, this is just a very small fraction of what I'm gonna take, but it's gonna be a weekend of um, lure making and fishing and fun. So uh, I'm pretty pumped about that. So anyway, just a few goodies that I hope that we're all gonna catch fish on. Okay, so here is the floating worm blend right there. Um, so we're gonna do the tails first, of course. And we're gonna do a blue and hologram sparkle tail. And then the body is going to be basically, um, ugh, look at that, watermelon candy. So um, I've probably made this before uh, on my channel, this exact color combo, but uh, it's probably my favorite uh, split tail worm color. Um, so that's what we're gonna do here. So let's get out some flake. And then you, if you don't have the hologram stuff, just use a little silver. So if you want to make this color at home, but you don't have this hologram stuff, 
Um, again, just regular small silver flake looks amazing. Uh, very, very good looking and effective color. You know, it's it's not one of those flashy just for flashy colors. This is a fish catching monster. So anyway, again, this is the floating plastic. And it definitely smells different <clears throat> than the sinking plastic. Um, so that's, you know, if you, I don't recommend sniffing the plastisol, but uh, if you mix them up, they do have a different smell. <laughs> so that you can figure it out uh, how to separate them back. <clears throat> so anyway, those will be our tails. And uh, I'm pretty excited to see these. I think that is a lovely, lovely color. Ooh, I don't know if y'all can hear that thunder or not, but it's there. Okay, there are the blue worms. And we're gonna cut our tails out. I like to do it about right there on this mold, right there at the uh, start of the tail. You can, of course, clip these wherever you want, down here at the bend, all the way on the tip. Um, I just prefer a lot to, to have a large section of the blue tail. Uh, just because it's so pretty. So anyway, and again, split tails are a pain in the butt. You gotta line everything back up and it's not um, necessarily the most. Yeah, my apologies everybody. I hit the wrong button and turned the camera off midway through that. <laughs> so, oops. All right, now we're gonna do this mold. Yeah, that whitening is getting bad. I may not be able to finish this video right now. I may be uh, running back out here later. Okay. Ugh. Yeah, this is definitely getting bad. All right. Come on now. Anyway, you guys get the idea. You have to uh, cut your tails off and leave them in the mold. And then you want to inject, of course, the next color very hot. Very, very, very hot. That way they will fuse together and you get a, a I mean, you, you actually get a pretty good bond. Something about the injection, the pressure of the two plastics meeting, you know, this is completely set up now. Hand pouring, you wouldn't get a bond at all, no matter how hot your plastic is. But the injection kind of forces the issue, I guess. Uh, don't, I don't know the science behind that, but it seems to work out better. So um, it, it almost like forces them to stick together. But anyway, now let's build the other color and get this done before I get killed by lightning. Okay, there is the regular sinking worm blend, the black bucket. So, for my watermelon candy, I like to use uh, MF Dark Watermelon, of course. No surprise there. We're going to do some 0 .035 purple hexagon flake. You can use square, square flake if, if that's what you have. Um, I just use hexagon because I like the stuff from Lure Craft. I know Lure Works has a lot of that uh, hexagon, uh, excuse me, the square cut flake. So if you're looking for some square cut glitter, you can get it at Lure Works. I'm sure Lure Craft has it as well. Anyway, <clears throat> that plastic's a little too hot for that purple glitter. I heated it up a smidge too much, but uh, this will still work just fine, I think. Let's see what we have. Yeah, looking good. Oh, I feel like it's looking good. Boom, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. All right, let's finish off these worms. We're gonna put our glove on. Oh gosh, lightning bolt. And here we go. Draw up a full injector. And you don't wanna push hard. Uh, you don't want an accident. But basically when you inject these, um, you want to do the plastic hot, not too hot, like I just got it, but inject the plastic hot and really hold pressure for a while, but inject normally. Don't push harder, don't lean on it, don't push faster, slow and steady, but just hold pressure. 10, 15 seconds of pressure. I hope you guys can hear the thunder, I'm really not kidding. It's getting bad out there. But uh, yeah, so split tail colors are a lot of fun. It, it takes a lot of time. It can be aggravating depending on the intricacy of your mold. If, you know, if, if you're doing this with a little crawfish or creature bait that has all these little tentacles, um, it can get pretty aggravating. Okie doke. 
Drum roll time. see if these look okay yes look at that ladies and gentlemen boom not only is it a lovely color watermelon candy split tail with the blue hologram but the tails are floating so um, I'm not sure if that's really gonna look any different in practice than let's just say a full floating worm um, but I definitely like the idea of it um, and it was, like I said, it was suggested to me um, by a few uh, subscribers to do something like this. So, you know, the, the, the cool thing about having both types of blends is that you can do these types of things and, and experiment. And, uh, and, and of course, you can actually just blend the two together, you know, in the same cup. And uh, if you don't really want a sinking blend, you can offset it by mixing in some cold floating plastic to basically just get like a neutral, buoyant, you know, stable plastic, if that makes any sense. Basically what I was trying to say was, if you don't want either or, you can mix them together, let's say half floating, half um, sinking, to have just a straight neutral plastic, um, if that's the action that you're looking for. You know, I. I tend to believe that a lot of action really depends on your retrieve and the way you rig it. You know, a floating worm, you know, if, if you were to put too big of a hook on it, um, it's gonna make the majority of that worm still sink to the bottom. You may have a little bit of the tail, you know, sticking up, but uh, yeah. So, you know, it, it kind of goes both ways, but I love the floating plastic. Um, it has been great. It's, it's, it, it's very easy to work with and I think these are going to have some sick tail action. Yeah, here comes the rain. It's starting to come down. So we're probably, uh, probably going to have to put this video on hold. I'm hoping I can come back out here tonight and finish it because I want to make some more worms. Um, and then I want to uh, obviously put them in uh, some sort of container of water and just see how they act. Uh, I think they're going to look absolutely phenomenal. Um, and, and I think the tails are especially going to look good. So um, anyway, we got some nasty stuff coming in. Um, of course, right now while I'm filming, there's no lightning bolts. But uh, there was just a second ago. So anyway, that's enough ranting. We're going to head inside, pack it up for right now, and uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to finish this video up. All right, so over here we have some crawls started. I'm going to do the same thing with some of my uh, punch bug crawfish. All right, and here are a few more of the split tail worms. Beautiful, beautiful. Put those in a bath for just a minute. I get a lot of questions about the bath from new viewers. It's just cold water, guys. That's all it is. Cold water to help kick off the curing process. That is it and uh, about 10 or 15 minutes in the bath. A um, little bit of flashing there, as you can see. Um, 10 to 15 minutes in the bath uh, does a bait good. So that's that. Yeah, it's pouring outside, but we're still here. So the way I like to do these crawls is just to hold the claws in place. I literally just rip the body off. That's it. That um, breaks them off right there at the body and uh, just makes it a tad bit easier to do. So anyway, line those back up or we'll make sure that they're all the way in there. Okay, that's good. And close the mold. <laughs> do it to the next one, of course. You get the, the hang of it. So yeah, that's that. Yeah, I'm curious if the camera's picking up the sound of the rain hitting my driveway. Luckily, the lightning's gone away, so um, it's not it's not as bad as it was before the storm got here. It was uh, quite the quite the firework show. Okay, time to shoot the bodies of the crawls here. We'll just run through these real quick. All right. Well, actually, not quick because you got to hold pressure. So don't listen to me. 
not going to do these too quick. But anyway, you get the drift. I don't know why I just skipped that one. Couldn't tell you. Weird, weird stuff happening here. But hopefully these crawls will come out good. Definitely think they will. Okay, just real quick, wanted to get a, a very um, brief close up of the crawls. So, they definitely look awesome. Normally I wouldn't use worm blend for a crawl, it's a little soft, but I wanted to kind of um, make something other than just a worm. I got to thinking about it, and I feel like a crawfish, because of the uh, claws, um, would be a good candidate for doing something like this. If you've never heard or seen water reacting with plastisol, that's it. Ugh. Definitely got some uh, moisture in that, so definitely be careful, guys, because it can get a lot worse than that. Almost like grease bubbling or popping out of a uh, pan on a stove, but a lot worse. Okay, everybody, so uh, time for a quick tank test. We have a larger bath. Um, so what we're going to do, <laughs> I guess we're just going to take a few of these worms and uh, drop them in and just kind of see what they do. Okay, oops. Oh golly, that is a lot of water in there. Yeah, just drop them in. Sorry, I wanted to get them separated. So it looks like the tails are trying to float. Okay, yeah, the tails are definitely sticking up. Um, these two in particular. Obviously, uh, the worms themselves are flat on the bottom. And just to contrast that, here is a worm without a floating tail. You can see the whole thing is on the bottom. These tails are at least sticking up. Um, let's see. Let's look at it rigged here. This is just a very light Texas rig. Yeah, hold on. Try to move some of these other ones away there. It's getting quite enough water in here. But uh, yeah, you know, uh, again, the, the tails are doing their best to, to float. Um, yeah, you can see over there in the corner, those tails are like straight up. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely think it's pretty cool. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the crawls here and just kind of see how they do. Yeah, they're, they're trying to stand up. Yeah, look at how well the tails are standing up over here now. It's almost like they stand up better after a minute or two. And again, these aren't even fully cured. I want to say after they're cured fully, they're a little more buoyant, uh, the floating stuff. Um, that's just kind of been my experience with it. Yeah, look at that. There's definitely a lot of blue that's hovering off uh, the... Sorry, I didn't realize the water was shaking so much. There's a lot of blue that's still sitting off the surface. Yeah, sorry, got interrupted there. We uh, had some groceries delivered to the house. So let's move these to the side. And, and again, for contrast, there is a crawl with the sinking plastic. Well, it's supposed to sink. <laughs> you know, even the sinking plastic doesn't just sink like a brick. Oh, that claw has an air pocket in it. That one's gonna float, at least that one claw. Yeah, I, I'll tell you, I am, um, I, I'm actually really, really liking the way these look. Obviously, the longer they sit in the water, the more waterlogged they're going to be. But if we just drop them all in there, you know, you should see a lot of floating tails. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of blues sitting up. So I, I definitely think you can do some, some cool things here. I, you know, I, I think the floating stuff does uh, really cool tricks, um, especially with worms. Um, you could use it for frogs, of course. Um, and, and then again, if you want to get really technical, you, you really you can use it for anything and vary your retrieve to get your bait to, you know, stay higher up in the water column. Uh, if that's what you want to do, you know, these swim baits right here, you know, that's all sinking, you know, straight to the bottom. That's a big chunk of sinking plastic. I don't want my swim baits to float. 
So I would not use, me personally, I would not use the floating blend. But yeah, you can see the tails are definitely doing the floating. Um, and, uh, and, and then even more so, the finesse blend would probably float a little better. So anyway, kind of a cool experiment. Um, if you guys want these worms and crawls, I'll sell them to you. Um, hit me up, worldsworstfishing at gmail.com. Uh, these are really cool. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, I just, uh, golly, I'm rambling so much. You know what? We're cutting this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I don't want to talk your ear off.